Hey, I'm Joshua with Sidecar, and today we're going to make a device mock-up using smart objects in Photoshop. First thing you want to do is gather the assets for your project. Uh, you'll want the photo of your device. In this case, I have this photo of a phone on a desk. And then you're going to want to grab a couple of screens, uh, whether those are the screenshots or comps that you've already created. Uh, so here I have um, my iPhone home screen and then a sidecar splash screen. All right, so I'll go ahead and open this up. Now, whether you buy stock photos of devices or you shoot your own, I find it best if the screen is already black. So the next step then is to bring in some guides to each of the corners of the screen um, by clicking and dragging from the ruler. So what I'm going to do is zoom in to right here. And you can skip this part if you want to and just eyeball it, but I find it's easier to line up the corners of the smart object um, and fine tune as necessary after that. You'll need uh, two sets of guides for every corner. So that looks about right there. I'll go down here, grab, put two more guides in. And what I'm looking to do is create an intersection of where, that's, where that corner of the screen will stop. So, you know, the corner of the screen will stop right about here. And again, you don't have to be uh, super precise here because we can always go back and fine tune it later. Again, now we're on the bottom corner and create two more sets of guides for the corner. And then zoom into this last corner and grab two more sets or another set of guides. So now we have guides set up for every corner. And we can go ahead and turn those off uh, by hitting command semicolon. And we'll get back to those later. All right, so the next step is uh, to create a rectangle using the rectangle tool. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that and then click on the canvas and enter in the screen dimensions. Now this needs to be the resolution of the device screen. And in this case, I'm working with the iPhone 6, which is 750 pixels wide by 1,334 pixels high. Hit OK. The color doesn't matter, but I prefer white because it's easier to see against the black screen. Now we need to convert this to a smart object, which is the magic behind the mock-up. We'll close this out. Go up to your Layers window and notice the thumbnail of this rectangle. Right click the layer and select convert to smart object. The icon in the thumbnail changes and that lets us know that this is now a smart object. I'm going to double click here and rename the layer to smart object. So what this does is it creates a sort of bucket that we can throw stuff into. If you double click the smart object thumbnail, it opens up into a new window. Our smart object keeps the original characteristics of the original shape. So in this case we're going to use that to our advantage um, with how it works with the dimensions. And the smart object allows us to work non-destructively. So when we throw stuff into this bucket it'll be reflected back in the original Photoshop document. It's pretty powerful which you'll see shortly and we'll be coming back to this smart object later so for now we'll just close it out. After the smart object is created, we need to transform this rectangle to match the perspective of the phone. And that's where those guides that we created earlier come in handy. So hit command semicolon to bring those guides back up. And then you'll want to transform this down. So uh, the command short key for that is command T or control T on a PC. And these transform controls are now on this rectangle. Now what you need to do is if you hover your mouse over the corner you'll notice that it changes to these resize handles. Hold down command and it changes to this white arrow. Now what this allows you to do is drag each corner independently to the corner of the screen 
and this is going to line up perfectly with those guides that we created earlier. And once that's all in place, you hit enter to apply the transformation. We turn those guides off. Now this is a pretty good foundation, but you can see that it's, it's thicker up here than it is on the side here. Um, so then what you do is zoom in to the corner, hit command T to bring up the transform controls, hold down the command key over the corner, it changes to the white arrow, and then just drag and readjust. Hit enter to apply the transformation, and I'm going to zoom back out and see how that looks. Now that's looking pretty good. Um, just going to take a look around. Everything's looking pretty good. I think it might be a little thick up here, so I'm just going to zoom in, hit Command T, hold down my Command key, and then adjust that up just a little bit. Hit Enter to apply the transformation, zoom back out, and I think that's that's looking pretty good. Again, it's just a little bit thick up here, so I'm gonna I'm actually just gonna drag this up just a bit. Hit enter to apply the transformation. And there, there we go. From here it's looking pretty good. So that means now we get to the fun part, which is putting the screen in. You're gonna want to go and grab your app screens or your splash screens or your home screen or whatever. And go over to your layers window and double click the smart object thumbnail. And that's going to open up the smart object window. So now we're going to grab this home screen, click and hold, and then drag it to the window. Now here's a pro tip. If you hold down the shift key before you release the mouse button, it'll drop the screen right into the middle of the canvas, perfectly centered in there, and that's what we want. So the next step is to save this smart object. So you hit Command S or Control S, and then close out this window. And then go back to your Photoshop document and boom. Now that screen is showing up perfectly on the phone. You could stop here, but there are a few more things that we could do to get it looking a little bit more realistic. So this screen, is because it's so full of color, it doesn't look totally real. I mean, we can zoom out and take a look at the photo. And it's, I mean, it's pretty vibrant. The screen is so full of color that it doesn't look quite real. And one way to fix that is by changing the opacity of this smart object layer. So I'm going to zoom back in to the photo. And remember at the beginning when I said make sure that you have a black screen in the original photo? Well, this is why. So if we turn down the opacity, I'm going to say maybe 90 percent. Now it's now it looks a little bit more real. We took a little bit of that color out of the photo and that's because the black screen is starting to show through uh, this object. Um, so it all depends on your photo but I find turning down the opacity to 90 to 95 percent is a good starting point. If we zoom back out and there we go. That's starting to look a bit more real. Um, it's not, this screen isn't so bright. So now that we have this in a good spot, I'm going to bring in another screen just so that we can see um, the effects of some of the other stuff we're going to do. So I'm going to double click the thumbnail and I'm going to grab the splash screen, drag it over to the smart object. And the smart objects are kind of like mini Photoshop documents. You can see we have all of these layers over here still. I'm going to save out the smart object, and now I don't need these splash screens anymore, so I'm just going to close them out. And so now that smart object, um, because we put that splash screen on here and saved it out, now it's reflected back in the Photoshop document. So at any time, we can go back into the smart object, double click to open, turn off this layer, and now we have the home screen. Save it, close it, and now that screen is back. But I want to look at, um, I want to have this splash screen on here so that we can see some of the effects um, that we're going to be applying next. I also like to add a faint highlight on the screen to replicate the lighting in the original photo. And so for this, we need to zoom back out and just study the photo a little bit. You'll notice here in the right, the right hand corner, 
you see this bright spot and this is where the light source is and if you take a look at the phone you see that the shadow that it's casting and then you can look at the notebook and see the shadow that it's casting so we know that the lights hitting here and traveling across pretty much at this angle to give us those shadows so now what we're going to do is create a highlight to mimic that light pattern and to do that we need to create a new layer above the smart object I'm going to rename that highlight All right, I'm going to zoom back into the phone. We only want the highlight to apply to this screen. So to do that, I'm going to go over to the Smart Object, hover over the Smart Object thumbnail, hold down Command, and you'll notice that the hand changes from just a hand to a hand with this box. Now if you click the thumbnail, it's going to load a selection. And the selection is everything that's on that layer. And so because this layer just has the Smart Object screen, that's the selection that it's going to make. And you can see the selection um, right here in the document. And so to create the highlight, I'm going to use the gradient tool. I'm going to go over, select the gradient. And if it's not selected already, you want to make sure that the foreground to transparent gradient is selected. And if your foreground isn't already white, if it's some other color, make sure that your foreground color is set to white, because that's going to be the color of the highlight. So make sure that your highlight layer is selected. Now you have your gradient. And what you're going to want to do is click and hold at the bottom of the screen. And then drag across the screen the angle of that light source. And then release. And now we have this gradient going across the screen. Brighter at the bottom because that's where the light is. And then faintest at the top because that's where the light ends. Hit Command D to deselect the selection. And now we just need to adjust the blend mode and the opacity to our liking. I find that the blend mode soft light and starting at about 60% is a good starting point. Now this will all depend on your screen. The darker the screen, the less opaque that it needs to be because that white's really going to show up more on a darker screen. So now this is looking really good. I'm going to turn off the highlight and smart object layers. Look at this original photo. You can see that there's a glare on the phone screen. Now if your photo doesn't have the glare or you just don't want to include it, then you can totally skip this part and you are done. Now if you want to include that glare, I'm going to go through the steps to make that happen. So just like with the highlight layer, you're going to want to grab a selection of the smart object. So hover over the Smart Object thumbnail, hold Command, click. We see that this Smart Object selection is loaded. Now go to your original photo. And I'm just going to turn off the Smart Object so we can see the original photo. And we, we want to make a duplicate of, this, of just this selection of the screen. So the shortcut key for that is Command J. We see here in this Layers window that the screen was copied. I'll turn off the background so you can see that this is just, just that portion of the screen. I'm going to rename this layer to Glare. And then you want to move that above the Smart Object. I'm going to turn the Smart Object back on. And you can see because this glare is sitting above it, you can't see the Smart Object below it. What we need to do now is remove the darker pixels so that only the lighter pixels remain. And for that, it's as simple as changing the blend mode from normal to screen. And what that does, again, removes the dark pixels so that only the light pixels remain. And you can see here now, in this section of the screen, is that that glare from that original photo is now on the screen. And just like the highlight layer, we can adjust the opacity to our liking. And that's looking, that's looking pretty real. Now because we have both of these, we can turn on the highlight layer, turn off the glare layer. Maybe I'll zoom back out here and take a look to see how it all looks together. So for me the glare layer is adding a little bit too much distraction, so I'm going to go ahead and just turn that off. The highlight, maybe I'll bump it back up, it's looking a little faint right now. And I'll go into the smart object layer, turn off the splash screen, save the smart object. Now I'll see how a home screen looks in that phone. I can turn this highlight layer on and off. 
maybe zoom in to get a, get a good look at this. Turn the glare on and off. Yeah, for me, I'm going to leave the glare off. I think it's just a little bit too distracting. I'm just going to leave with the highlight layer. So now because I'm using a darker screen, it's not as apparent. So maybe I'll turn this opacity back up to 60%. I'll maybe play with a little bit more. Toggle it on and off. Yeah, and that's looking really good. I'll zoom back out. Look at the photo as a whole. The screen is still looking kind of bright. So maybe I'll go back into the smart object. Reduce the screen maybe to 80%. Well, maybe that was too much. Bump back up to 85. Zoom back in and take a look at it. Now that's looking pretty good. And that glare was really the last step. We have our smart object that we can turn on and off. Double click in there. Add as many screens as we want to. We have a glare layer that we can turn on and off, change the opacity if it's too strong, and then we have a highlight layer also that we can turn on and off. If you like this project or have any questions, let us know on Twitter at Made by Sidecar, or on Facebook at facebook.com slash Made by Sidecar. Or if you're looking for device mockups already made, you can check ours out at madebysidecar.com. Thanks for watching everyone. See you next time.